Good Monday night to everyone. Mark Abrams here in Philadelphia. Let's go all the way down to the Sunshine State, Miami, Florida, where I got light heavyweight contender Steve Giffard, who this Thursday night takes on Dennis Gratchev in a bout that will be seen on Impact Network uh, next week. Uh, I believe uh, it's going to be March 13th. Uh, Steve, what's happening? I'm doing well. I just got done. Uh, I just got done training at the gym. Just relaxing now, you know, getting ready for these weigh-ins. Uh, so you've been out of the ring a little bit, a uh, little bit. Uh, so you excited to get back in the ring on Thursday night? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, I'm looking really forward. You know, even though I haven't been competing like official bouts these past few years, um, I still have been in the gym, still been traveling, going to different camps with other champions and top contenders. So. I haven't been completely out of boxing, but um, it'll be nice to go and it'll be nice to get back in the ring in an actual uh, official bout, you know, that counts against my record. Like you said, there's been a lot of good training camps down down in Miami recently. And who, who have you worked with? Yeah, well, um, well, I've gone not only in Miami. I was in the UK. I was sparring with um, Joshua Buwati. He's a top light heavyweight contender. He, Absolutely. Uh, He's undefeated. He's an Olympian. Um, I also was in Montreal. I was sparring with um, uh, Elder Alvarez. Mm -hmm. He's former WBO champion. I also was sparring with Arthur Biederbiev. Um, and just a few other guys locally and stuff. So, you know, I, I've stayed busy. I've always been in the gym. But now, you know, uh, it's time to be able to get back in the ring and, and compete you uh you, you're a, a fighter who, who's shown you know a lot, a lot of um a lot of heart and determination a lot of guys uh you know it's known that you dropped your first two fights and you've you've just that really didn't deter you. you've come back and won 17 in a row uh talk about that you know after the first couple fights where a lot of fighters would have been okay, you know what, I'm done with this and it, it, this and that. But you came back to not only right the ship, but, you know, you're on the verge of being a contender. Yeah, you know, it was it was rough um, coming out. Uh, my first bout, both fights I could have easily won. They could have been gone my way. Like my first bout, I was winning um, fairly easy. And uh, I got a cut. My fight was stopped into a cut and on the, over the eye. And then the second bout, I lost a split decision, which that guy actually ended up fighting. I'm almost positive he ended up fighting for a world title, IBO world title, uh, eventually later. But, uh, yeah, those were fights that easily could have went my way. But, you know, I stuck with it. And, you know, I've won, won 17 fights in a row. And uh, Thursday, I, I looked at having my 18th win in a row. Well, you, you mentioned Thursday. You take on a... Um... A tough competitor by the name of Dennis Gratchev, who's fought some, you know, some real good competition, beating a few, uh, beating a few contenders uh, along the way. Uh, you expect this? Uh, what kind of fight do you expect? Yeah, I mean, I expect him to come, uh, trying to fight hard and and trying to put on the pressure and stuff. But I'm uh, faster, quicker, smarter boxer. So, I uh, and you know, I've trained hard. I train really hard for this camp, like I do for every camp, and, and um, you know, I, you know, my skill, speed, my skill set and speed will be uh, too much for him. But I, um, you know, I expect uh, a, a tough game opponent that'll come in from the first bell to the last bell. What does it when you you seen? Uh... A lot of fighters or fighters who can beat a guy like Dennis Gratchev, who's, who's a tough customer, with a win, do you think that thrusts you into, I know you want a, a fight, in, uh, you want a belt over in China, the WBO Asia Pacific title. Does, that, does, it, does a win kind of get you back uh, to maybe fighting for a world ranking or even maybe getting a world ranking off of this fight? Um, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, especially with the pandemic going on, um, uh, like, for instance, uh, 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 Joe Smith was supposed to box um, for the vacant WBO world title. Against Max and and I, think, I think his opponent caught COVID, you know, so I think Correct. just me 
having this fight, finding a decent opponent, getting a W there, and other promoters and managers seeing that I'm active, I think it'll open up a lot of uh, opportunities because you never know, mid-camp, somebody might need a replacement or something like that. You know, there's not, there's not too many people available in most states. They can't train like we can train in Florida and stuff. So, uh, but once once it, they see that I'm back active and stuff like that, I think it'll be, you know, a nice win will open up a lot of doors. Break down the light heavyweight division. Uh, you mentioned Joe Smith and Glassov. You mentioned Better B. Have you been in camp with? Uh, there, I mean, there's some good good opportunities for some good fights uh, in the 175 pound division. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's actually there's a lot of uh, heavy hitters in there. Um, the uh, uh, Bevel, he's he's pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. Who's with uh, Matchroom Boxing? Uh, they have Marcus Brown, who's who's with um, Al Heyman, who was obviously beat of who who's also in the top ten pound for pound. Who's a monster, Pascal. absolute monster. Yeah, Pascal. He's now, he's a world champion again. Yeah, he's a vet. Tough, strong guy. You know, you have a lot of fights that they could just mix and match and make some uh, exciting big, big punches in that um, division. Yelder Alvarez. So, yeah, I mean, and then you have the guys over in the U UK. You have Joshua Boazzi, who's coming up. Um... Anthony Yard, who, but I think he just suffered his second defeat, but he's also a pretty tough guy. So there's a lot of bouts that could be made and a lot of um, opportunities. You know, it just depends on COVID and everything. So but we'll see. We got a Chinny Lou Farmer who's watching on uh, YouTube tonight. He said, is this Steve from Florida? So I guess uh, you have a fan out yeah. there who's watching. How you doing? Talk about training with uh, Kevin Cunningham. You're down there, a uh, world championship trainer. Yeah, I'm training over here with Kevin Cunningham. Um, I've been in camp with him for a few months now, you know. Um, obviously, because of the COVID, we couldn't compete. I was supposed to fight with him before the COVID. But, um, you know, obviously, everything the world was shut down. But um, camp with him is amazing, man. All you have to do is show up and everything. He has everything in place for you. He's real organized, no nonsense guy. Um, you just got to be willing to work, show up, ready to work, and everything. You don't got to ever worry about not being prepared. As long as you're ready to work, well, if you're not ready to work, he's not gonna work with you. He's, you get kicked out of the gym. But as long as you show up and you're ready to and ready to work, um, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have a great camp. You know, you don't have to worry about who I'm gonna spar or. Am I going to be in shape or anything like that? He's real organized. You come to camp, and it's go time. Uh, again, Chitty Lou, again, who's watching on YouTube, says, uh, good fighter, we call him Superman. You've been called Superman before? Oh, yeah, some people in the amateurs. I remember, yeah. Okay, we, 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 uh, this interview reach, reaches all over the place. Is this your first uh, fight with uh, Kevin Cunningham? Yes, yes, my first one. And uh, like you mentioned, uh, I guess it, it's, a, it's a real hard-nosed uh, ship that he runs. Obviously, I know he's a former former uh, policeman from St. Louis, so he, uh, he, he, I mean, he, he runs a real tight ship down there. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. But it's real organized, like I said. Um, all you got to do is just be willing to work. It's a lot of hard work, but it's, it's the real deal. Um, you know, you do a lot of stuff, but I know, like, me, especially just being in camp with him for these past few months and and especially for this fight, um, I just know, you know, there was no corners cut and I'll be, you know, I'll have no doubt in my mind that I'll be in, in tip-top shape. This fight's going to be on Impact Network. It's going to air uh, next week, uh, March 13th. Uh, 93 million homes the fight goes into. So uh, I think we lost your video for a second. Can you hear me? We just lost his video, so we will uh, wait for Steve to get to get back on. Hopefully, we'll get back on. We've got another another uh, 
question from uh, Chinny Lou. I believe I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, Kevin Cunningham is a, is a great one. Really solid guy. Yeah, he's uh, a terrific trainer. Uh, Devin Alexander, uh, he, he's known for. And uh, Corey Spinks, he's led the world titles, among other uh, contenders. And uh, we'll see if we'll get Steve back on in a second. I think it uh, could have been some internet problems. Uh, anyone else out there uh, have any questions about the world of professional boxing? We just had some great fights over the weekend. Canelo Alvarez scored a, what was expected, a third-round stoppage over Avni Yildirim in Miami, right where Steve is from in Miami. Uh, see if we can get him back on. Uh, it was a, but the fight of the night was that heavyweight fight. I don't know if anyone saw that with Jerry Forrest and uh, Jalei Jong. Here comes Steve. He's back on. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can get Steve back on. Steve, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Somebody tried to call me and... and uh, uh... Well, we 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 don't have your uh, we don't have your video. We have your audio. I think we lost his audio again. So I think we, I think we know what the problem was. I think it was uh, someone tried to call him. Uh, so we'll, we'll give Steve uh, another opportunity to get back on. Give him a couple more minutes. But that fight with uh, Jerry Forrest and uh, Jili Zhang was it was a terrific fight uh, on Saturday night. So not much going on this weekend. We got Clarissa Shields fighting on pay per view on Friday night. Um, if anyone's in the Miami Delray South Beach area, Thursday night, the 4th of March, you'll see Steve Gifford take on Dennis Grashev. I Let me just, I got the card right here. Um, got to, uh, an undefeated light heavyweight from Sweden who now trains out Las Vegas named Robin Safar. He'll be part of the card, an undefeated Fighter by name of Antonio Williams, I believe he's a, about a, fe a featherweight, if I'm not mistaken. And Jeremiah Milton, a good-looking heavyweight. Steve, are you back? Yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. So we'll just—I uh, don't know—I don't know what happened to your picture here. But um, the question I was asking was: uh, you're fighting on Impact Network, 93 million homes. What do you feel about fighting on such a big platform? I don't know why we keep losing them. <laughs> this is uh, it's what happens when you have live, when you're doing live uh, interviews here. See, most of the people who do this, they're they're doing it on delay, and they're 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 taping it. Now we we do everything live around here, so uh, you know because it's more authentic. We have to talk to the fans. We got a uh, Chinny Lou who's uh, who's. Who's helped me out real here, real here with the talking about the Canelo fight being trash, but the fight with Jerry Forrest was a good one. That was a heck of a fight. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts of any of the fights next weekend. Uh, there's some good fights uh, on the 13th, uh, especially you can watch this fight on Impact Network on the 13th with Steve Gifford taking on taking on Dennis Grachev, and uh, I guess we'll give Steve one more shot to see if we can get him on. If not, we'll. We'll wrap this thing up. Anyone else who has any questions or comments, uh, we can. Uh, we'll talk a little boxing for a few more minutes, and uh, we'll see if Steve Gifford can get back on. But yes, this is a terrific fight. It's going to be at the Delray Beach Boxing Gym on uh, in Delray Beach, uh, Florida. Yeah, it's a, I do agree. Ch Canelo did have a heavy bag in front of him. That, I mean, I, I think you're insulting heavy bags by calling. Uh, yield the rim a, a heavy bag. So you've got Steve back on. I don't see his video. And we don't hear his audio. Here, now we got his audio. Just, uh, we'll try to do the audio here. Can you hear us, Steve? All right, well, we'll, we'll uh, wrap this thing up. I'll shoot Steve a text and, uh, I'll shoot Steve a text and we will, uh, thank him for his time and we'll get him on maybe after the fight. Uh, on uh, after his fight, we'll get him on uh, after the, the fight airs on Impact. Watch Steve Gaffard take on Dennis Scratch. Have this Thursday night live uh, in Delray Beach, Florida, or wait for it on delay. It'll be on Impact Network. Ninety-three million homes. It's uh, gonna be a big year for Impact Network and Impact Network Boxing. I'm looking forward to getting down to the uh, Sunshine State, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you very much for.